Welcome to the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. My name is Julie, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Sweet Sparrow Knits, and you can find my hand dyed yarn and sewn project bags at sweetsparrowyarns.etsy.com. Welcome. This is episode 25, and I have quite a bit to talk about today. Got my show notes. I'm ready to roll. I don't have any finished objects this week, but I did make significant progress on two of my whips, so um, I think we will just hop right in and I'll start off by showing you my whips. That little sound is Murphy the cat. Hey Murph! He's like a squeaky little guy. He doesn't really make a full voice to meow, he just goes, right bub? You gonna say hi on the podcast? This is the Murph, my little dude. He likes to be held like a baby. Right, my love? I'm not sure if the uh, camera mic is close enough to pick up his purring, but he is enjoying this very much. Right, little dude? Mwah. When he's happy, he drools. That was a little gross. All right, sweet boy. Time to podcast. It's time to podcast. He says, no, it's time to snuggle Murphy. Hi. Good boy. Ready to get down? Oh, no, you were just, you were just adjusting yourself? No. Okay. You can sit on my lap if you want. Or you could sit next to me. Oh no, you're gonna go. You're gonna go nudge the tripod. <laughs> so my first whip is one that you saw last episode, and this is the Foxglove cardigan by Kate Davies. Foxglove, Foxgloves. How many are there? Just one. One Foxglove. The Foxglove cardigan by Kate Davies. And as you can see. I have made a ton of progress. It's so pretty. I love it. So this is um, made out of Rauma Phenol Garn, which I picked out at Vogue Knitting Live with the help of lovely Ellie Skandier. I have now finished the entire colorwork yoke. My sleeves are finished and attached. Oh, I love it so much. So this was my first large, oh, Murphy, you can't sit on the sweater, my love. Murphy kind of likes this sweater a lot. I, I don't know if it's the sort of rustic feeling of the yarn or what, but he's very into gently petting this sweater. He was born to be the cat of a knitter. Oh, now he's protesting by rubbing against the tripod again. Come here, little bub. Okay. I've made a little spot for Murphy next to me, so hopefully he will settle in there and we can continue. <laughs> this was my first big color work project. I have knitted a small color work baby sweater in the past. Um, the Sweet William Pattern by Anne Kingstone, and that has little colorwork bunnies on it, and it's very cute. <laughs> um, but this was my first adult size colorwork project, um, and my first time doing colorwork properly, I guess. Um, although, whatever method, obviously, works for you is the proper way for you to do it. But this was my first time doing colorwork holding one yarn in each hand. Um, Overall, I'm really pleased with it. I do have some areas that I want to improve on. Um, this was the first time that I had ever knit with three colors in a row. Um, so one round of knitting would have more than two colors in it because um, every row of the fox gloves until the very top has this dark green color. And um, my tension's a little funky <laughs> on that color because it was only used pretty sparingly. And I did catch my floats on the reverse side, um, which helped quite a bit with the tensioning, 
but it's it's still a little weird in places because the color was used infrequently relative to the other colors and um, I don't know I just had a hard time getting it to um, not be too loose so um, I'm hoping that a little blocking will help but Overall, for my first big color work project, I am very happy with this, and I'm already thinking about all the color work projects I want to knit next. And I am just starting the neckline rib, so I just have that, and then the steaks and button bands to go, and I will have a finished sweater. Oh, and I need to graft the underarms. So, I'm very excited. But I'm almost done with this because I can't wait to wear it and I can't wait to knit more color work. So all in all, um, I am definitely considering this project a success. Hopefully the steak and button band goes well. Um, I think I will probably do a little practice steak. I'll look up a steaked coaster pattern. I have plenty of all of the color work yarns left over. So I think I want to try to knit a little color work um, coaster and steek that just so that I'm not going in uh, completely inexperienced into steeking. Yep, there it is. I know I've showed this like 10 times now, <laughs> but it's so pretty. I went to Brooklyn General with Jacqueline and we visited Carlene who is um, Carlene Energy of the Made with Carlene Energy podcast. And I got some finishing notions for my foxglove cardigan. I picked out these super, super pretty buttons from Favor Valley Woodworking. These are my favorite brand of wooden buttons. They're really beautiful, and these are the Elm Wood buttons in their medium size. And I think they will look absolutely gorgeous with this cardigan. I got two cards of them because um, I think I need ten. And there are six per card, so I'll have a couple extra for something, something in the future. So I picked up two different types of ribbon to cover my steak because um, I wasn't sure whether I would have enough of the one that I liked best. But I think I actually will, so that's exciting. And it's just this... Sorry, cat ruckus. It's just this very pretty grain ribbon in this smoky blue kind of color. And it's made of 100% rayon, so it's very soft. Um, it's not a stiff grain ribbon. So I'm very excited to cover my steaks with this. I think that will look beautiful and as you can see it goes quite well with the color work. It's not the exact same shade of blue as the blue in my color work but it's it's quite close and I think it'll really make the inside of the sweater look great. And I also had picked up this cotton uh, twill tape just in case I didn't have enough of the grain ribbon but um, I think I will so I will use this for something in the future. This is a color that I really like, so I'm sure there will be another steaked project in my future for which this is just the right ribbon to color cover the steaks. Okay. And my other work in progress is one that you had not seen before. And I have been keeping this in one of my bags. This is a Sweet Sparrow Yarns project bag. It's kind of wrinkly because it's been shoved into a tote bag because it has been my uh, traveling project. But this is in my toadstools print. It's so sweet. I love it. And this is the I Smell Snow Shawl by Melody Hoffman, the mandarines. And I am just working along on it. Again, this is also a little bit rumpled up from being in my bag, but you'll get the general idea. 
And the first colorway that I'm using in this project is my Pajama Day colorway on my Gosling base, which is um, an 80-10-10 MCN base, Merino Cashmere Nylon. Um, and it is a plump two-ply, and I think it just looks great in garter stitch. And the little eyelet details um, are a really nice way to kind of... Um, to break up the garter stitch, I am knitting this on US size 6's and I'm using my Carbons short tip needles, which um, between these and the Luca short tip needles, which I also have, um, it's actually really hard for me to knit with regular length tip needles now. Um, I do have quite petite hands, oh, there goes my, um, which always makes me laugh because Jacqueline and I always kind of giggle whenever we have to say that because it's such like a stereotypical like oh I'm so feminine I have such small hands but I actually do uh whatever whatever <laughs> so um for my hand size and my method of knitting um which I flick um the short tip needles really work perfectly for me. They fit really comfortably into my hand and they fit enough stitches on them that I'm not constantly having to push my stitches up. I really love them. They're a really comfortable needle for me to use. And here's just one more shot of my progress on the shawl thus far. I really, really love um, this braid detail that goes up the sides of the shawl. Oh, it looks so pretty. I just love it. The other color that I will be using in my I Smell Snow shawl is Morel, and this is also my yarn. This is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the Morel colorway on the House Wren base, which would you believe that I still didn't turn off my phone sound? This is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the Morel colorway on my House Wren base, which is a tweed fingering weight. And I think they look very pretty together, very subtle and soft, and I think this is a finished object that I will wear constantly. I'm considering keeping it for a shop sample, but I'm not sure because I also just really want to wear it. So we'll see, I guess. We'll find out if I can resist wearing this. Um, maybe I can resist wearing it until after, um, until after my Black Friday trunk show I do knit. And I also have a trunk show coming up in September at the Naked Sheep on Staten Island. Um, and I will give more details about that um, as the time gets closer. But... Yeah, we'll see if I can resist wearing the shawl long enough for it to be a sample, at least for those two events. So those are my only whips this episode. I've felt pretty monogamous <laughs> recently with my knitting. Um, I haven't really felt the desire to cast on a lot of new projects. I want to get through the projects that are currently on my needles. And then, um, for instance, the I Smell Snow shawl, I started on a four-hour train trip because I was going to see my high school best friend Marissa and um, and I had a lot of time to knit on that and then I had the train trip back as well so I got a lot done on that and then I also just got back from vacation at the beach so that was my beach knitting as well as my knitting for when I was hanging around with my family because um, it didn't require a ton of concentration uh, but it also wasn't, um, it was enough to keep my mind a little occupied. I have a giveaway, um, or rather, I have the results of a giveaway from last episode. Um, Catherine from The Kitten Knits very kindly donated this skein of her agate colorway. And the winner for that was post number 38. Jewel Hickold Knits, um, which her name is also Julie, so congratulations, Julie. Um, send me a message on Ravelry, and I will get your address and send that right out to you. Um, 
I will probably be posting this on, let's see what's today. I'm hoping to post this episode on Wednesday, August 8th. So um, if I don't hear from you by Wednesday, August 15th, then I will uh, send you a message just to let you know that you've wanted to get your address. Let's talk about sewing next. So as you can see, this cotton chambray, which I showed you last episode, is still very distinctly fabric shaped and not dress shaped. My original plan for this fabric was to make the Alder Shirt Dress by Grand Line Studios. But um, as I mentioned last week, I am in a time of my life where my body is changing pretty rapidly. Um, sorry, the camera stopped for some reason. Who knows? So, as I was saying, um, I have lost a significant amount of weight. I have lost about 20 pounds at this point, and it is likely that I will continue to lose weight for the next six months to a year. Um, this is something that I'm doing for my thyroid. Um, basically, I, I hesitate to talk about weight loss on the podcast, as I mentioned last time, because... Um, we all are constantly bombarded with diet culture nonsense, and um, you really don't need more of it from a knitting podcast. Uh, so I just want to emphasize that this is something I'm doing for my health. Yeah, it's not something I'm doing to fit into anybody's uh, beauty standards. It is strictly for my health so that I can avoid um, increasing my thyroid medication dosage um, as my thyroid gets worse. So all of that is to say, um, I was thinking about it and I decided that I don't actually want to make the Alder shirt dress quite yet. Um, because I have lost an inch in my full bust, three and a half inches off my waist. Um, my other measurements aren't really relevant for that dress because the bottom is uh, quite full. So it didn't, really makes sense to make something that would only fit the body that I have at this moment in time when my body will most likely be continuing to change um, for quite a while in the future. So I decided to hold off on anything particularly fitted for the moment. Um, for instance, with the Alder shirt dress, my muslin fit pretty well without a full bust adjustment. Um, and I, but it would have fit better with a full bust adjustment, but then it probably wouldn't fit in another few months with a full bust adjustment because unfortunately, part of where my body has decided to lose weight is from my bust. So I didn't want to make something now that I would not be able to wear in the future. So. This fabric is going to be re, um, reassigned to the York Pinafore by Helen's Closet because this is a pattern that will fit me now and it will also fit me um, another 20 pounds from now or whatever. Whatever that ends up being. The number is not important. It will fit me now and it will fit me in the future because it's not a fitted garment. So. The York Pinafore originally is also super cute, but I am going to be doing um, a hack of it, which is also published by Helen's Closet, and I'll put a picture of what that will look like right here. So it has um, thin straps and a tiered gathered skirt, which I'm hoping to get the full um, skirt length that is shown in the photos from Helen's Closet, but um, since this was originally planned for the Alder shirt dress, I'm not sure that I'll have enough fabric for that because that dress is uh, quite a bit shorter. Um, we'll see. I may or may not have enough fabric for that. The other thing that I'm considering is using a different fabric to line the bodice because that would free up a decent amount of fabric, I think, for the tiers of the skirt. 
Um, I haven't laid it all out yet. I'll have to take a look at it and see um, how... Okay, so <laughs> I'll have to see whether it would actually save me a significant amount of fabric to line the dress with something else or whether the way that the cutting layout is done, um, whether it would actually just leave me with kind of a square piece that wouldn't be particularly helpful for the tiered skirt. Uh, luckily, since this is just a little dotted chambray, um, I think I'll be able to get away with cutting some pieces on the cross grain if I need to. I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. The pattern does look slightly different on the cross grain, so ideally I'm hoping that I can cut everything on the lengthwise grain, but if I can't, that's also not the end of the world. So. I'm hoping to get this done in the near future because I would really like to be able to wear it for the rest of this summer. Um, and then in the winter, oh, and I have little black tank tops uh, to go under it too because that is not really something that I want to wear without something under it. I don't know how to explain that. It's a pinafore dress. It really needs something under it. Watching and listening. The first watching that I would like to mention is Dungeons and Dropped Stitches. So this is um, a live stream. It's brand new and it is run by um, Skananigans and it's a, um, it is basically um, a Dungeons and Dragons game consisting entirely of knitters and um, Skananigans, Melissa, is the Dungeon Master or DM and there are I think six, six players or five players, um, and basically they just live stream themselves playing Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, they also uh, talk about what they're knitting. They have one full episode out right now, and they live stream on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and I'm already really looking forward to that tomorrow. I have also started watching the Pip and Pin podcast, which is a podcast by um, the knitwear designer who goes by Pip and Pin in her designing life. Unfortunately, her actual name is escaping me right now. I'll put it right here, right there. Um, and because of the way that I like to watch podcasts, I have started from episode one, and I am currently on episode three and I'm really enjoying it. I have also been watching Tiny Paper Foxes, Jenny on Instagram, and Devin, Brian and Heath on Instagram, as well as their um, farming homesteading account, which is Our House Farm Life. Yes, Our House Farm Life. Um, they just got sheep. They just got a very, very sweet little flock of sheep. Um, I don't want to say too much because I don't think that anything I could say could possibly do justice to how adorable these sheep are. Definitely go check out Jenny and Devin's Instagram accounts because oh, it'll brighten your day. <laughs> Seeing those adorable sheep just <laughs> makes me so happy. And I am just drinking cold brew coffee by Stoke, which Jacqueline got me hooked on. Um, I'm assuming that everybody knows this by now, but whenever I say Jacqueline, I am referring to Jacqueline Salem of the Brooklyn Knit Book Podcast. Um, but yeah, she got me hooked on this cold brew coffee, which is so good. And I am drinking it out of a mug with blueberries on it. And I got this from the blueberry farm where my mom and I go blueberry picking every summer and where my whole family went blueberry picking every summer when I was growing up. Definitely very positive associations with this mug. Listening. Um, I just finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban on audiobook. Um, of course, I've read and listened to it numerous times before, but um, I was going to a Harry Potter trivia night 
and I felt like The Prisoner of Azkaban is the book that I knew um, the least, and I felt convinced that there were going to be questions um, about that book. And I was actually right. There was one question that I was so pleased that I had just listened to the relevant chapter that morning. And in case you're wondering, it was what animal was Hagrid's first care of magical creatures lesson um, centered around? And the answer was hippogriffs. Just in case you were curious about that. I am also listening to Let's Pretend This Never Happened, which is a memoir by Jenny Lawson, um, also known as the Blogess. And um, I've started listening to this previously as well, but um, for whatever reason, I just wasn't able to get through it. I don't know if it's because at the time I was working in an office and just generally not super thrilled with my life, <laughs> and I just couldn't... Um, I don't know. For some reason I just was struggling with this audiobook previously, but I restarted it this weekend at the beach. So I'm enjoying it a lot more this time around. I think I think being a lot more relaxed these days myself uh, than I was the first time that I tried to listen to it has helped immensely because she talks quite a bit about um, anxiety and um, how she's dealt with that through her life, which sounds very depressing, but it's a really funny book. Um, but it's not necessarily something that I was in a place to listen to when I was... I'm, I mean, you guys know that I was not super happy in the fashion industry. Um, so I guess I can just be straight with you and say I was anxious constantly uh, when I was working in that job and um, listening to a book about someone's anxiety just kind of magnified my own at that time and I just wasn't in a place to handle it. But I'm really enjoying the book this time around. Um, there were definitely moments where I had to just remind myself that this was somebody's experience and even though I might find it difficult to listen to. Um, for her, it was it was her normal. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this book, but uh, with the caveat that it's, it's maybe best enjoyed when you're feeling quite good yourself. Um, I also have purchased her latest audiobook. Um, I want to say it's called furiously happy um, and I'm looking forward to listening to that as well. I do have some Sweet Sparrow Yarns news that I am very excited to share with you. I will be dyeing the September shipment of the Sleeping Bear Yarn Club um, for Wool and Honey which is um, a yarn store in Michigan and in Incidentally, this is the yarn store that Andrea Mowry's Wool and Honey um, sweater was named after, so that was very exciting. And um, this is the colorway that I am dyeing up for them. This is called Peninsula's Third Cutting. It's coming across a little bit bright on camera. It's actually quite a subdued gold. There, that's a little bit more accurate, I think. So it is a gold with brown and gray undertones, and it's soft, and um, it's called Peninsula's Third Cutting, um, after the third cutting of hay, of the haying season, when the hay that's left is um, quite dry and this beautiful gray, brown, gold color. So this will be offered exclusively through the Sleeping Bear Yarn Club, which you can purchase um, from Wool & Honey by going on their website or by calling them on the phone. And um, all of their contact information uh, can be found on their Instagram page and on the store's website, uh, which is woolandhoney.com. There. 
And when I say club, they actually do it month by month. So if you only want to purchase this month, that is totally fine, but that will be the only place to get this colorway. And they took the most gorgeous photo of it. I'll insert the photo here that they posted on Instagram of the um, of this colorway. And Melissa and Liz from uh, Wool and Honey have been such a pleasure to work with and it was just the biggest compliment to be asked to dye for this club. So thank you very much to them. Let's talk swaps and acquisitions. So I did a swap, just getting my goodies here. I did a swap with Rosemary of Akara Yarns and she sent me such a beautiful package. Rosemary was so generous and um, let me choose a skein from her shop. And I chose her hydrangea colorway on her organic sock base, which is 80% merino, uh, non-superwash, and 20% nylon. And it comes in a very generous 115 gram skein. It is subtle and soft and beautiful. It is called her, um, her organic sock base, but I don't think I can bring myself to use this for socks. I think this might need to be a hat for this winter because I think it will be warm and cozy and I just, I want that color near my face. <laughs> um, I want it to be something that is seen every time I wear it because it's just so beautiful. And then she very kindly also sent me a very, very sweet project bag. And it has these sweet little bicycles with baguettes in the front basket and a little cat riding on the back. So adorable. So, fun fact, I do not know how to ride a bike. Um, I just didn't learn as a kid. Uh, there wasn't really anywhere for me to bike to, so I just didn't really <laughs> feel inclined to learn. So um, I want to learn how to ride a bike, but as a 28-year-old, I think your sense of uh, not wanting to look stupid <laughs> is a lot stronger than it is as a, a young child when most people learn how to ride a bike. But the entire reason that I want to learn how to ride a bike is because I want to ride around with cute things in the front basket of a bike, um, such as flowers or um, a little picnic. So this bag may be the push that I need to learn how to ride a bike. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, there's a truck outside and it's super loud. How do they know? How do these trucks always know when I'm podcasting? Who knows? I'm going to continue for the moment and hopefully it doesn't get too loud, but if it does, I'll pause and we'll come back in a little bit. I also received a bag from Dogwood Knits and this is Vicki. She is um, going to be opening up her shop this fall and she sent me this gorgeous, gorgeous bag. It has a beautiful natural colored, um, I believe linen fabric on the top. And then the bottom is this beautiful dusty pink color. I think she's calling this the Dusty Rose colorway. And her logo is so beautiful. Vicki also has such a beautiful logo for Dogwood Knits. Her little knitting needles, which are branches. Oh, this is so pretty. Um, I think this is going to go up on my fridge just because it's so cute. I love it. I love this design. I think it's really beautifully done. And it's a gorgeous bag, so um, definitely check out Vicky's shop when she officially launches. I do have just a few more things for acquisitions. I acquired my first skein of Volen Vine yarns, and this is um, actually purchased from Stacy of Stress Knits. Um, you can find her as Stacy L. Stone on Instagram, which you absolutely should. 
because she has the sweetest little family in the world. She has um, an adorable brand new baby girl named Eliza and a really lovely husband named Doug and their adorable pug, Esther. So Stacy was doing a little de-stash um, because she has had quite a time of it lately. And I really wanted to purchase something from her de-stash so that I could both uh, support one of my dearest friends and also get some beautiful yarn. And I got a skein of Gashley Crumb from Bull and Vine Yarns. And this is a colorway that I have been wanting for ages. So I was really excited to snag this because to be totally honest with you, I just, I really struggle with shop updates that you have to um, click around very quickly and make your decisions very fast. Um, it just stresses me out too much so I generally don't do them. And it's for good reason that those updates are like that. For instance, Kristen's yarn is gorgeous and, you know, there's a reason everybody um, is in a, a frenzy when she posts an update, but um, for me, for my mental health, it is too stressful. So it was such a wonderful surprise to be able to get this gorgeous skein. I'm not sure yet what this will be. This is on her Volca base, which is her MCN base. Um, I don't know yet what this is going to be. I think it would make a stunning, stunning pair of socks. Um, maybe the Irving socks by Jacqueline? Jacqueline Salem? Brooklyn at Folk? <laughs> um, I think it would be really beautiful in that, but I don't know. I think it might just live in my stash for a little while and be admired and petted and loved. And then my other acquisitions came from the trip that I took to Brooklyn General, and they're just little, but I love them. I picked up two of the Brooklyn General stitch markers because, of course, I did. <laughs> There's a little acorn and a little squirrel, and of course I couldn't possibly leave without those. They are exactly up my alley, and I love them so much. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I actually have a squirrel tattooed on my thigh, um, on my left thigh, and it is knitting. <laughs> and I have a sparrow uh, tattooed on my right thigh. Um, so I really... I really wanted to get these, and then I also have an acorn. This tattoo is so hard to show. I have an acorn tattooed on my left wrist. There's no good way to show this. I will, um, I'll just pop in a photo. I know I have good photos of this tattoo. And then on that same theme, I purchased 15 of these absolutely adorable buttons. And they have a little acorn and oak leaf motif on them uh, that really looks quite a lot like my tattoo. So I fell in love with these and I'm so pleased to have purchased them. And they are going to go, well, seven to eight of them <laughs> are going to go on my Ramona Light cardigan, which I am hoping to start in the next few weeks. And I think that will be a beautiful combination. I'm just trying to get this to stay on here so I can show you. I think that'll have to, that'll have to do. I think that will look absolutely beautiful on that card again. And I'm so glad that I purchased these. And then I will have um, either seven or eight left depending on how many buttons I decide to put on my sweater so I can then put them on another sweater which again it's very much um, kind of in my wheelhouse so I'm sure there will be a sweater for which they are the perfect buttons in addition to my Ramona light. And I have one more acquisition. Um, I absolutely love Catherine Bed of Roses um, stitch markers. 
So I went ahead and gave myself a little gift um, for my birthday and a successful trunk show at Do You Knit. So I decided to go ahead and purchase one of her. Did I already talk about this? I feel like I might have. Or did I just post it about it on Instagram stories? I think I just posted about it on Instagram stories. I don't think I had this the last time that I recorded the podcast. So I have one of Catherine's necklaces and I love it. I wear it all the time. Um, and I decided to treat myself to one more. So it's just a really beautiful collection of stitch markers and progress keepers. And this is her Pippi's Treasure Hunt necklace. And it has a lot of charms that are based on the Pippi Longstocking books by Astrid Lindgren, um, which I have very happy memories of. Oh, I'm real close here for a second, but I want to be able to show this and talk to you. Um, so I have a lot of very happy memories of the Pippi Longstocking books because we had them on vinyl, on, you know, records. Um, and we would play them uh, in our living room when I was growing up. So I, I associate the Pippi Longstocking books with winter days in my parents' living room. Um, we have a wood stove there, or you know, my mom now has a wood stove there. And um, my dad used to slice pears from our pear tree and dry them on the wood stove. And I just associate Pippi Longstocking with all of those cozy smells and the crackling of the fire and just a really, really happy time in my life. So um, I was very happy to get this necklace because it just is such a positive, um, a positive memory for me. And of course, because Catherine's work is absolutely stunning as well. There's so many beautiful charms on there. There's a little bird and feathers and a key and there are tiny scissors on here somewhere. I don't want the camera to refocus. There, there are the little scissors. Oh, it is stunning. Ooh, I just love this. And I particularly love that Catherine has a mix of stitch markers and progress keepers. So she has this... Um, this little um, section with small stitch markers, progress keepers. I love that I can just pop this on um, when I'm going on a trip and know that I will have every type of marker and progress keeper that I could possibly need. I'm gonna put it back on. I don't want to not be wearing it, even for a moment. I posted on Instagram last night that I would be recording a podcast today, and I asked if there were any questions anyone would like me to answer. So, Jane Ellen Klein, hi Jane, says, how did you enjoy your vacation? Where did you go? Um, I went to Brigantine in New Jersey. It is nearish to Atlantic City, and it's just a very small uh, beach town, and I spent four days... Um, on vacation with my extended family, my dad's side of the family, and it was a lot of fun. It was a little bit much for someone like me who is a relatively extreme introvert, um, but I love my family, and um, it was, overall, it was a good time. <laughs> um, I got up every morning um, at 6 and got to the beach by 6.30 so that I could catch the sunrise and have a few hours of um, quiet time. I did my meditation on the beach in the mornings, which was wonderful, and then I would spend a few hours knitting or napping and just enjoying um, kind of having the entire beach to myself because at 6.30 pretty much nobody else was on the beach, which was wonderful. Um, 
The ocean calms me down in a way that uh, very few other things do. Um, I find, I feel very centered and peaceful um, when I'm near the ocean. So that was really great. Caitlin Brooks asks, would you ever do a workspace tour? Well, I would love to. Um, unfortunately, my workspace is kind of my entire apartment. Um, I live in a one bedroom apartment, so everything happens right here. And as such, my workspace is kind of split throughout um, a few different rooms. I keep my um, my in-stock yarn and my blank yarn um, in cabinets and on shelves in my hallway. And I have my packing area and my sewing table in my bedroom. And I do all of my dyeing in my kitchen. So to be totally honest with you, I probably will not do a workspace tour until um, some indeterminate future date when my workspace is a little bit more uh, compact and condensed into one area as opposed to spread all throughout the apartment, um, which I don't think is going to be while I'm living in this apartment because very rarely are all of those areas photo ready at the same time. So uh, because that would kind of Basically, in order to give a workspace tour, I would also be giving an apartment tour. And as somebody who is self-employed, full-time, I try to keep my apartment, uh, you know, tidy. But sometimes life gets crazy and it doesn't really look its best. <laughs> so I guess the short answer is we'll see, but it is unlikely until I eventually... Um, I don't really know <laughs> until I eventually either, um, get a separate workspace, which I don't really want to do just because I love working from home and being with my cats all day <laughs> and having the, um, the flexibility to kind of mix, um, work stuff and personal stuff as far as my time goes because uh, sometimes I need to do personal stuff during my work hours. Sometimes I need to do work stuff during my off hours. So um, I think for me the ideal solution would be a room inside my home to be a work room. But the only way that that would really happen right now is um, if I basically treated my bedroom as a studio apartment and made that both my primary uh, living space and my bedroom and then kept my living room entirely work related, which I don't think is a realistic option for me right now because, well, because I like having a living room. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll see. Next question. This is from Freshwater Pearls. I'd love to hear how you find encouragement when your autoimmune disease acts up. So, um, I believe she's referring to my hypothyroidism. Um, I'm lucky in that my hypothyroidism is not Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease in which the thyroid basically, your body attacks your thyroid. Um, I have just regular old hypothyroidism, which is that my thyroid is real lazy. It does not do anything. <laughs> it was doing something up until relatively recently. And um, unfortunately, stress is very bad for the thyroid. And I went through an extremely stressful breakup, um, which I really haven't talked about anywhere. It's not something that I talk about publicly particularly often. Um, but this was a breakup that had probably six months of lead up time during which time I was super stressed out constantly. So that really was bad for my thyroid and um, may have been 
a contributing factor to why my thyroid essentially is doing nothing anymore. Um, it, it, it's hard to say for sure whether it would have happened anyway um, without that period of extreme stress, um, but there's really just no way to know. It may have happened anyway. It may have happened um, stretched over a longer time frame. It may have happened exactly the same way that it did. So basically my thyroid produces nothing. It produces almost no estrogen. It produces almost no testosterone. It does zip. It just, it's a freeloader, that thyroid. So anyway, um, so as to how I find encouragement when it is acting up, which basically for me means that I am super tired and feel drained and just physically unable to do much. And um, mentally for me, having a bad thyroid time period, whether it's a day or, you know, a few days, um, means that I have a hard time focusing and I get very scattered and forgetful. Um, I'm really lucky in that my hypothyroidism is relatively easily controlled through medicine and diet, which is, as I mentioned before, why I'm doing keto. Um, so... Basically, I just have to be gentle with myself and tell myself that I need to listen to my body and not try to push myself um, harder than my body is able to go at that time. And I just kind of think about the things that I can accomplish while I'm resting. A lot of the time that's knitting or planning out new colorways. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't always find encouragement. I often feel really frustrated with my body when I'm not able to, um, when it's not able to keep up with what I would like it to do. But there's really not much I can do about that. So um, I try to just keep a, a positive outlook about it. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always work. And in that case, all I can do is wait it out. The next question is from more.nits, which is, what's something people assume about you that isn't true? Hmm. I don't really know. I don't really know what people assume about me. I feel like I've been quite lucky in that um, in that I've been able to kind of get to know the knitting community slowly um, because I started out as quite a, a small dyer. It was a full year before I went full time and um, before that I was very active in the knitting community on Instagram as well. So I feel like people have gotten to know me for who I am. Um, for the most part. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what anyone assumes about me. I'm not sure. Sorry. Maybe I'll do one of those um, Instagram question things that says uh, what's something that you assume about me and I'll tell you if it's true or not and then we can go from there. Angora Moose says, what are your three most beloved animals? First of all, thank you for doing three because I don't think I could choose one. Um, cats, definitely cats. Um, they might be number one. Um, other animals that I love. Hmm. You know, it's funny. I, I love animals so strongly that it's very hard to choose. Um, it might have to be sheep for number two because they provide wool which is you know my livelihood my hobby my passion um and also because they just seem so sweet particularly after watching jenny and devon's uh recent um sheep instagram stories and videos um and the third ones hmm Ooh, it's maybe a toss-up between sparrows and squirrels. Um, 
I recently put a bird feeder out on my fire escape, which to be honest, I don't think I'm supposed to do in my apartment, but my, my uh, former next door neighbor used to bring his cat out onto the roof to run around. So I feel like um, putting a bird feeder on my fire escape is like small potatoes. Um, and nobody has complained about it, so we're just going to assume it's fine. Um, so I have been having a lot of sparrow activity out there recently, which has been great. And there are four sort of main sparrows that come to my bird feeder. And it's wonderful to see how each of them really has their own personality. And they all look very different when you get to see them close up for an extended period of time. Their faces... Um, are all very distinctive, their feather patterns are all different, their behavior is very different, some of them are um, a little bit more aggressive than others about uh, keeping control of that bird feeder, so it might have to be sparrows. I mean, obviously it's you know, sweet sparrow knits and sweet sparrow yarns, I love sparrows, but um, my love for them has grown exponentially recently as I've been able to watch them more closely and um, I feel like I know the little flock that hangs around outside my bedroom window on the fire escape. And Angora Moose also asks, name an artist you're inspired by. I would have to go with Peter Doig. I love his work. It's dreamy and soft and um, it has a sort of melancholy nostalgia that I find extremely um, cozy. Uh, it's interesting because when I look at it, I can tell objectively that it's melancholy because of the colors and the sort of um, the subject matter is generally quite... Um, wintry or isolated, but I don't know if it's just because I love winter so much and because I see that as an opportunity to stay inside and light candles and have hot tea and be cozy and take bubble baths or, um, or whether it's because I grew up, you know, in the country in quite an isolated area in a little house in the woods that his paintings make me feel very cozy. Um, they don't make me feel sad. Miss Melissa Liu asks, what were your favorite children's books growing up? I have a lot of favorite children's books and I still have a lot of favorite children's books because they pretty much all came to my apartment with me. Um, off the top of my head, I would say The Secret Garden and A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Um, are two of my very, very favorites. Um, the Last of the Really Great Wang Doodles, which is actually by Julie Andrews, um, although I think she wrote it under a different name. I'm looking over there because my bookshelf, one of my bookshelves, is over there. And I think that's where that book is, although it may be in my bedroom. Yeah, I think it's in my bedroom. But um, that's an absolutely incredible book. It's so imaginative. Um, if, if you were someone who um, looked at my Etsy shop in the very, very beginning when I first opened it, one of the first colorways that I had in there was called Professor Savant's Umbrella, and that's a reference to the last of the really great Wang Doodles, and I would actually like to um, rework that colorway and add it back into the shop because that book is just magical and means a lot to me. I have distinct memories of my mom reading that to me and my brother um, at bedtime when I was little. So um, that's definitely a favorite. What else? The Harry Potter books, of course, I absolutely love. Oh, uh, The Thief Lord by Cornelia I don't know whether it's pronounced funk or funky. I'm going to go with funk because I feel silly saying funky. So um, that's a really, really good one. Um, that is about a group of children in Venice who are basically pickpockets and live in an abandoned movie theater. And it's just such a beautiful book. It's so well written. Um, ooh, it's 
so good. I actually think I'm going to uh, listen to the audiobook of that today after talking about it because I love that book so dearly. Homestead Knits asks, what are your top three patterns to cast on in the near future, aka Dream Knits? My Ramona Light Cardigan, which, Ramona, I know you're watching this, your cardigan. <laughs> um, one of my lovely friends is named Ramona and um, I know she gets a kick out of hearing me constantly referring to the Ramona cardigan. So that is definitely coming up soon. Um, there's another sweater, I'm actually just going to look it up really quickly, that I just added to my queue. So this is the Girlfriend's Cardigan Anka by Anka Streak. So this is a beautiful cardigan that is knit with one strand of a fingering weight yarn and one strand of a mohair yarn. Um, so um, it's basically what it sounds like. It's kind of a longer cardigan. It's open front um, with pockets and it just looks so soft and cozy and I can't wait to cast that on. Um, I have to decide what I want to knit that out of. Um, I think I might want to do it in gray, so I want to dye up a really soft gray for the shop because that's a color that I've noticed I often pair with things, but I don't think I really have one in the shop that is quite as neutral as I often want. Um, I have Jon Snow, which I love my Jon Snow color, but to me that kind of is a standalone color, um, and I want to have a gray that's soft and perfect for pairing with other colors or just as a complete neutral on its own. So I will probably do that out of my sandpiper base for this cardigan, which is my singles base, and pair it with my feather mohair base. Um, so that is definitely um, one of my dream knits at the moment. And okay, I'm going to go with, I know you said three, I'm going to give you five because I can't narrow it down further than that. Um, I also am really looking forward to knitting the Rose Quartz Cardigan by Vera Valamaki, which is a long cardigan as well. Um, it is knit in DK weight and it's just so cozy and I think I would wear that all the time in the fall and winter. Um, it actually reminds me quite a bit of um, a cardigan that I have from Anthropology um, in shape anyway, not, not really in um, texture details because that the one from Anthropology has some cabling on it, and um, but the shape is quite similar, and I love that cardigan, and I love how it looks, I love how it fits in with my wardrobe, so I think having the rose quartz sweater would look, um, would go very well with a lot of what I wear. And the last two are the Cipolla sweater, which I mentioned in my last episode as something that I am just dying to cast on, and then also, um, I'm sure everyone has seen this by now, but in the upcoming issue of Pom Pom, there is the most incredible color work pullover that has um, like the phases of the moon on it and then sort of a starry pattern and some arrows pointing up and down and it's just beautiful and I can't wait to knit that. I'm actually going to be dyeing myself some yarn for that as well as putting kits in the shop for it as soon as the pattern uh, comes out because ooh, it is stunning and I can't wait to knit it and I can't wait to wear it. I believe that is all of the Q&A and that brings us to the close of this episode of Sweet Sparrow Knits. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again soon. Bye! It's kind of a Oh, sorry, I have a bug bite on my ankle from when I was on the beach, and it's really driving me nuts. Brooklyn Gennard. <laughs>